Hi, this is Adam. You know, someone said Rome wasn't built in a day, and I wasn't there, I don't know, but um, I can pretty much figure that it took a little time. But the analogy applies here in the sense of the understanding of the efficacy of the uh, uh, validity of structured water, the uh, issue, the opportunity, the need, the necessity to get and improve the efficiency of water. And it's going to take time also to understand the benefits that are actually waiting for humanity, for society, to realize by taking the simple steps to add an element that increases the efficiency, that restores the energy, the life force uh, to water. But as such, because it's going to take the time it takes, it's also um, prudent to get voices in, to talk to people who know about water from various, and not just various, from all perspectives. And to that end, we're going to introduce you to an agronomist, uh, Ken Campbell, uh, developer of a product called Instagrow. He knows a thing or two about soil as it relates to uh, agriculture and getting the most out of it. Of course, he needs to understand water. Uh, so I asked Ken to offer his insights. Before we do that, I actually want to show you how his product works, or, or for that matter, actually show you. He showed me his product, Instagrow, working. And after that, we'll get his assessment. We're talking with Ken Campbell. I'll call him a 23rd century agronomist. Thank uh, you. <laughs> he, who knows the soil. He knows how to get the best out of a seed with his Instagrowth and InstaSeed products. Well, what you should probably do is take a picture that there's no water in there. It's just dry seed. Yes. Okay, and now we're going to add some water, and we're going to see how fast everything starts to germinate. Shake it up a bit. Now why don't you say what you've done to I've, the seeds? I, I've taken the seed, I've run it through the gem process, and you can see some, some of the, uh, here I'm just going to... Yes, you can see a bunch of them. They're already sprouting in there. Adam, can you see the little white nib coming out the end of the seeds? You can zero in on several of them there. And the first primary shoot is already coming out. But what I've done, I've taken the seed and uh, I've initiated the the germination uh, here uh, through a process that's called the gem process mm -hmm. and then what I've done I've dried back the seeds and the seed has the memory and it just takes off where it was where it was and it just continues the germination and these all... seeds are starting to germinate you see oh, wow. he just did it 20 minutes ago it's starting to germinate just started them growing they're, they're, um, it's when I that's alfalfa. <laughs> that's alfalfa seed. We're asking him to just give an assessment of how he sees that it can, uh, in terms of the effects that it has on the water and its effect that it can have on the crop itself. Yeah, what, what I have to go back to uh, here, Adam, is that uh, the way that, that plants and even ourselves function is on the transferring of electrons. and. Uh, certainly with the vortexing that occurs, uh, there's an implosion that of course uh, that, that I see that, that is happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, the actual angle of the uh, two hydrogen bonds to the oxygen are changing. And so the water itself will then not only chelate more nutrients, but it will also end up acting in helping in the exchange of the electrons. Uh, it occurs within the water, it occurs within the air, 
uh, certainly uh, the whole physiology of, of a plant is looking at, at having the, the electron exchange uh, within the within the elements it is so very very important so a lot of water because it it has a lower uh, angle on it it can't uh, chelate or pick up those nutrients in the first place the electron exchange from the plant cannot occur it it actually costs the plant more electrons to get the element it's allowing for less energy that the plant needs to pick up those essential minerals. That makes more energy available to do things like grow. Like grow and produce a high quality uh, and, crops. And have more nutritional value That's right. available. That's right. That's exactly it. Mm -hmm. Now of course <clears throat> in nature uh, this, this occurs and it also occurs within the air that we breathe and that uh, then you're getting into hydroxyl production and how fresh it smells after a rain and uh, everyone can relate to that freshness. Mm -hmm. Well the same thing ends up happening to the water. It's very fresh, it's very alive, it's very uh, vibrant. It, it has a life-giving force to it. A life-giving force. Now when have you had that term attributed to your city water? Well, for that matter, why are farmers far more preferring rainwater to even using the water from the ground? It's because rainwater has something you might call a life-giving force within it that doesn't show up as um, significantly in the groundwater. Well, that's the whole purpose behind the design and the intention and the effect of the technology is that in fact it concentrates, it brings, it delivers a life-giving force back to the water that comes from the ground or from the tap, from the city, wherever it comes from. It may take time for us to really understand and appreciate it, but it begins with an intention to do so. And we have seen time and time again the benefits of adding this water, let's say of adding this life-giving force to water.